Hello everyone. Uh, today I want to talk on the VDM of Risky uh, Barrister Femi Falana and Son and uh, the EFCC and the prison, the controller of prisons. In the first place, Femi Falana, a senior advocate of Nigeria, I don't want to talk about his case. Because in the first place, like I said, he's a man I respect. He's the man, he's the defender of the less privileged. He has been doing it. In fact, look at this man, Ken Sarawumwa. He defended this man without taking money. Him, Ghani Fayemi, uh, Odisa Obakoba, um, this other guy, um, Festus Kiamu, they all defended Ken Sarawumwa in 1995. So, he's, he is a, he's a lawyer, so he understands even more than we do. So, if they found that there is anything VDM said which is against them, they understand the technicalities, they know how to handle it. So, the matter I don't want to talk about. But Nigerians, let's look at, let's listen, and let's concentrate on the audio, the voice in that audio. The allegations in that audio. You know, the allegation in that audio is the most important thing. You see, our people say that you don't leave the center of the drum. Instead of you to beat the center of the drum, you go and beat, you know, sideways. No, let's concentrate on the center of the drum. Because, as like I said, Femi Falana. He will handle this case. Whichever way he wants to go with VDM, he can do it. So let's not talk about it. But, you see, the attitude of Nigerian, uh, 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 especially government parastatus, that is what we should be more concerned. Because that is what has really affected that country. That is what has really destroyed that country. And honestly speaking, the allegations in it, be it true or false, the truth will come out. But I'll also tell you my personal experience with the Nigerian police and with the Nigerian immigration. Because the same thing that happens in all, it's almost the same thing that happens in all the government parastatus. They know how they run their things. For the very dark man, many people say he doesn't know how to present his matter. Okay, good and fine. But the most important thing is, at the end of the day, are you able to understand what is putting through to the people to understand? Yes, he is not uh, a, a, a trained journalist. He is not a lawyer that maybe will understand some technicalities in how to arrange and present matters. But at the end of the day, he is able to communicate the simple truth that you can understand. How many of us, you know, people will try as much as possible to drown his voice. But I tell you the truth. How many people can and do what that young man is doing? As for me, I commend that young man for what he's doing for the citizens of Nigeria. You may not like his ways, but at the end of the day, the results he gets for the people, that is what matters. And many people that will not like him, will not like him because... <laughs> If you, are, if you are highly corrupt, if your heart is rotten, and you see someone standing and fighting for corruption or for, that, for the rottenness in the system, you won't like him. So that is how it is. So the very dark man, I commend him. If you are not a man that has decided in life you can't do what he is doing, how many people can do that? Because everywhere people are afraid. People have been brainwashed. They don't know themselves again. They don't even know their left from their right. You see, if Jesus is to come again and be in the court as he was tried in Israel, do you know what Nigerians will do to him? They will do worse than what the Jews did to him. In fact, when the, the, the judge will ask, 
Should I give you, who should I, who should be free? Jesus or Barabbas? The people will shout, free Barabbas, free Barabbas, free Barabbas. And do you know what they will do to Jesus? Right before the judge, they will put rope on his neck and drag him. They will drag him and show he rose on the ground and peels all his body. That's what they will do to him before they will finally go and crucify him. <laughs> and do you know what they will do to Barabbas? They will lift him up, place it on their head, carry him like a king, celebrate him, put him in a Rolls Royce, drive him straight to the airport, put him in a private jet, take him on vacation, throw a large party for him, celebrate him, dance with him, do everything for him. Who was Barabbas? Barabbas was a criminal. And when the judge, Pilate asked, who should I free? This or that, Jesus or the, they say, oh, free him, free that criminal for us and crucify Jesus. So even when you see those who are fighting for you, what will you do? You will crucify him. You crucify them because you are corrupt. You talk what you don't know, you talk what is not necessary, and you forget the weightier matter that should help you, that should that, that if resolved should benefit you, you forget it. Look, recently, PDD, for Barry was being arrested in the US. And Nigerians are back home dragging Bonaboy. What has Bonaboy got to do with his arrest? Is it a crime to win a Grammy? Has he been implicated by the FBI or the police in, in the US? So why are you dragging your brother at home? So people, don't, people are confused and they don't know what to do. So I have two experiences, one with the immigration and one with the police. Let me start with the immigration. Many years ago, I wanted to procure a passport so I could travel. Do you know what happened? Went to the immigration, paid everything that was necessary. The day I was asked to come, I came there, got to the place, and they told me, or oh, the man on the seat that was supposed to do the final processing and print out the passport is not available, so he has traveled. And then uh, since I, I need it urgently, what I should do is I should pay them. In fact, they will get somebody to sit on that uh, chair and do this thing for me so I could get it and go that day. I kept quiet. I paid. Do you know that the same person who told me that he's going to get somebody to do that, which I paid the money to, he was the same person. That was his office and that was his duty. He was the same person who sat down did everything, not collecting the money from me, did everything, printed it out, and gave it to me. That is corruption. It's dead. I'm telling you the truth. Now, the incidents I had with the police. Some people defrauded me many years ago. They, they were able to do that because my pastor and my political leader was the one who asked me. They were supposed to procure something for me. And the man who introduced me to them was my pastor and my political leader. And he was out of the country. And he told me, and these same people, these two people were also out of the country. They lived together. They lived with him in the country where he was. So he was the one who told me, these people, meet them and give them money for them to do this thing for you. So when they came, I met them. After I interacted with them, my instinct was telling me something was wrong with these people. But because of the 100% trust I had from my pastor and my leader, I paid the money. I told him, even in the, the night, in the, when I was in the hotel, the night I paid that money, I called him again. I said, I'm not really convinced about these people. Do you want me to pay them this money? He said, oh, don't worry, pay them, pay them, pay them paid the money, and what they procured for me was horrible. At the end of the day, they ran away. The both of them ran away. When I discovered the whole thing, the both of them ran away. Then I took the master to the place right there in Lagos. I took the matter to Panty, Panty Police Station. Do you know what happened? Every day I was going for the case. The police will be telling me, what did you bring for us? What did you bring for us? What did you bring for... Ah! My brother, 
any day they call me for the case, they would expect me to be giving them money. So I was tired. I said, ah, what kind of thing is this? Finally, the, the IPO, the IPO in charge of the case. He even got to a point, when he sees me, he doesn't even want to, he gets angry at me. Why? Because I'm not giving him money the way he wants, the way he wanted. It even got to a time, within that time, I stayed six months on that case, six months. Within that time, he was getting married. So my, my senior boss, my senior man, <laughs> I respect you, he said, I right, want you go to the IP is ready today. Won't you go? I said, Oh, why? Why should I go? It's, it's not necessary. He laughed. He said, Oh, just go. Just feel free and say things yourself. So I went there. Lo and behold, <laughs> the same people, these people are arrested. Because when we were arrested, the two people ran away. But the, the people that are arrested were those they sent to me to receive me. And they, even the day I paid, they were there. They came together. They were like the errand boys, but they were all working hand in hand. So I arrested all of them, except the two that came all the way from a foreign country. So when I got there, the same people that were, we arrested that they were in cell, I saw them at the IPO's wedding. <laughs> that was when I said, oh, this case, this case. Wow. Then, that apart, it got to a point there was nothing he could do because it was just money. He has taken bribe and everything. So we transferred that case from there to another authority. And that was where I met the commissioner of police. When I got to that place, all the other men I met, policemen I met there, they were still, because before I met the commissioner of police, they were still processing things, processing things. So every day they would call me, I would come there. Oh, what have you brought for us? Give us something. Give something to the boys. Give something to the boys. Give this, give this, give that. Man. It was horrible. But finally, when I met the commissioner of police, superb man, and this man was enlightened. He sat me down in his office and he asked me to tell him what happened. Though he had my file, I narrated everything to me and he, he, he empathized with me. So he told me the only way he can help me in this case is I should tell my boss over there in the foreign country to give him the, num the, the house number of those people. So he's going to use Interpol to bring them down to Nigeria to do what? To face justice. My joy was high at, in, in, in right in the sky. But finally, everything was lost because when I called my boss, provide the address, my boss, he doesn't know the address. He doesn't know their house. They met in the church, blah, 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 blah. So at that point, I couldn't go further. That was where I stopped. So it was the only commissioner of police that I met that explained to me the current changes that they want to infuse in the system to erase corruption and those kinds. Because I complained to him, said, you know that they've been going on courses and those things that they are hoping things will change. He was a fine gentleman, honestly, the commissioner of police there in Lagos. So my brother, when you hear of corruption in the system, don't be shocked. And that is it. So, Nigerians, let's focus on what is our problem. Let's focus on things because the institution, those institutions need to be checked. There's a lot of things going on there. It's happening to almost everybody. So is it because VDM has decided to bring it out? Is that why you want to crucify him? Thank you. God bless you.